But what does the oil and the wine do into the bride of Christ? Those who are writing can write this. What does the oil and the wine, the new oil and the new wine, what does it translate into your life? Because I know I say this so well, that the oil and the wine church is the latter church, it is the church of Christ, it is the bride of Christ. Let's look at some of the parameters that the oil and the wine will help you to achieve. Number one, I just want to read through because today I told you I'm literally summarizing. Number one, seek ye first the kingdom of God. That's number one. The wisdom of the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit flows at this hour into the church, the wisdom that the Holy Spirit releases into the church will normally compare the church. It will compare this church. I'm speaking to the church also. To seek first the kingdom of God. Amen. And the rest you can feel it with its righteousness. And if you're right, you put down the following scriptures. Matthew chapter 6, verse 32 to 33. Matthew chapter 6, I said, verse 32 to 33. Don't knit your hand, the church, my daughter. I can advise you. Never knit your hand in the church. I promise you this is the house of the Lord. And the deliberations being made here have eternal gravity. That's why I'm here. Never need your head in church. Have the fear of the Lord in the church. Okay, another scripture. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 29. First Chronicles chapter 28 verse 9 and many other scriptures really we don't have much time need to summarize everything. Number two, the first one was seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So when the Holy Spirit will come into the church, into your life, you're the church, you must seek first the kingdom of God. When somebody just comes to the church and says, This church is seeking God. And it's amazing because the Lord himself promised that you shall seek me and when you seek me with all your heart I shall be found by you. In other words, you shall find me. Number two. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. You are sorry. Your mind and your strength. The church that is the oil and wine church of this hour, she will love the Lord her God with all her heart, all her mind, her soul and strength. And you have many other scriptures in the Bible to handle that. Deuteronomy chapter 6, 1 to 9. John chapter 14, verse 15. For the verse 21. Number 3. I'm just mentioning parameters. You can teach this also at home. Those who have Bible classes at home, Bible study with your family. Now, remember these points after the Lord takes me away. Use them to gauge yourself. Am I the oil in my church? Give the Lord your God your first fruits. The church that is the oil and wine church of this hour, she will always give the Lord priority. Even if you just wake up in the morning, the first effort is kneel down to the Lord. 
It will be practical everywhere in her life. She will always give the Lord her God. Her first fruit, her first effort, her priority. Even if I say, you just woke up in the morning and the first thing will be your knees on the floor. And spend some time with the Lord. It may start as two minutes. The next day three. Next time you find it's five minutes. Next time, oh, these days are seven minutes. Ten minutes in the morning. Give the Lord your God your first fruits. In whichever way. Number four. I think we are number four, right? Don't seek. Don't seek the approval of men, but of God. Amen. The church that is the oil and wine church of this hour. She has her priorities right. She will not seek the approval of man, but she will always endeavor to seek the approval of the Lord. And that is where the problem is. In nations like Australia, the church seeks the approval of the world, of the nation, of man. I want to be accepted. I found it also in Kenya. And in Kenya, I found the bishops, the senior bishops and pastors engaged in trying to seek acceptance from the world. And it's all over the world today. The church in Europe, the church in the US and Canada. I have also found that even South America, Central America, that they are seeking the approval of the world, acceptance. They want to be in right books with the world. And in Kenya, for example, they ended up with what they call interfaith fellowship. The oil and white church, that is what that's what the Lord said. If you see, if you see her, one who is in the oil and white, please don't touch her. So you gotta protect her for me. Because of these qualities I'm reading really here. How can you sit with a Hindu priest and a Muslim shake? And then you agree with say, we all agree, huh? Let us agree our, uh, uh, yes, we, we, let's issue a press statement together. Which means you have equalized your gods. Now you cannot even evangelize with them. Yeah, because, but we are, we, we, we are, we are together. How come, why do you want to change me now? Why do you want to me to convert your God? And we have agreed we are on the same forum, same platform, same level. Normalized Jehovah. Jehovah has been normalized. That was number what? Oh. Number four. Then number four, let us read the book of Galatians chapter one, verse, you can put it up there. Galatians chapter one, verse six and ten. Six to ten. And you see there he says, if I were to seek the approval of men, would I really be a servant of Christ? <laughs> you see that? Which is the mark, the mark of the church of Christ, the mark of the servant of Christ, is that, first of all, they are at odds with the world, with men. Men is the world. Oh, that is King James. You see that? You see that? You, did you do 6 out of 10? So listen, precious people. He says, if I were to seek the approval of men, would I have been a servant unto Christ? And the answer is no. So we have the fathers yet. Don't seek the approval of your daughters over certain biblical principles. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Stand firm on those biblical principles and say, for this form, 
we shall always fear the Lord. Amen. You see that? Yeah. By the way, your children are waiting for direction from you. Mm. And don't say, no, you see, I'm trying to love them. If you release them to a free spirit, you don't love them. Amen. For example, if I was to come here and say, Australia for these four days, what a beautiful country. I love you. I bless you. You know, of course I will pray for blessings here. If I leave, I've already prayed for blessings in the house. And the Lord will forgive it. Amen. But I'm saying, I did not come to dress your wound as though it was not serious. If I had come here to just say, Happy want to get some offering, a big offering, then I will not love you. I will not love you. I will not have loved you. If you really love the church, love Christ, love the sheep, rebuke their sin. Some of them might. Okay, in Kenya they ask me. But now we will lose all sheep. That's a difficult gospel. Mm. We will lose sheep because they look at the sheep, they looked at the sheep in terms of the offering of the day. So it was more it was more it was easier to accept with me, to agree with me, but than to do it. But listen to this. I said it. I began to preach saying that you just continue rebuking sin. And if you see people leaving, then be happy. If you see people stand up as you rebuke the dressing, the immoral dressing, the immorality, the worship, the whatever, if the, the, the husband who are unfaithful to the wives and so forth. If you see them leaving, the next weekend you have a few left. Then now you can thank God and know that you are the servant of Christ. Amen. And now you can know that you are bringing deliverance to the church. Amen. Because it is the Lord that brings the sheep. Yeah. And now their churches are flooded. Each church here, 3,000, 4,000. We are baptizing, we are what? They are opening other churches, they are going to expand. And I told them, don't worry. It is the anointing of the Holy Spirit that will throw the sheep in. And now, the sheep have come larger than the corrupt churches. Amen. And inside here, the truth is being proclaimed. And it is an overflow, a revival. You see that now. Don't seek the approval of man, but of the Lord. You just stand with the Lord. Even if you end up with only five families in the church, you just continue, don't change the message. I know your wife will give you a lot of pressure at home. She will sit, she will be on the phone talking to her family. He is destroying the church. We started so well. It was going well. Now he's destroyed the church. People have moved away. Including the girls of the worship. He rebuked them. They moved away. Don't change the message. Tell the wife, please. You know what? I love you, but can you just stay aside a little bit? <laughs> I, sort, I, sort, I sort this out with the Lord. Because he called me. He called me. I am responsible to the Lord on that day. Amen. Don't change the message. And wait and see the revival that will strike the church. Amen. Wait and see the revival that will hit the church. You will be astonished. In Kenya, it's there, it's there. Many nations now go there to see. It's incredible. You hear so many. How many? They go, man of God. Do you know on Sunday today, how many new people? We had 320 new people in church. New people came new and received Christ for the first time. In, I, but I always tell them, but 300 people is a big church in itself. Yeah, that is now a church. The Lord will bring in the harvest. Amen. The least, they say we had 30 people, new people. We had 40, we had 70, what? Like that. Every Sunday, there are people giving their lives to Christ. 
That revival ought to enter here too. Amen. That's why the Lord brought me here. But which number is that? Number five, we finished, right? No. We are moving to. Okay, he said, Be totally available unto the Lord your God. Mm. The church that is the oil and wine church is a church that is totally available unto the Lord. In fact, becomes the vessel of the Lord. There are no tractions, resistances here and there. That church is totally available. If you tell them, this Friday, we need to worship the Lord. They will be there, they will be worshiping the whole night until morning, Saturday morning. They won't tell you that, look, I have an engagement at Trouble Sydney Hotel. And at times they go to Sydney, they go to the African clubs, right? So it is not necessary. You can only find, if you go to the fish market, you can only come out with the fish. Or you can only come out smelling fish. <laughs> Listen to this. If you go to those so-called African clubs, or Latino clubs, or Chinese clubs, Korean clubs in Sydney, whatever, you can only pick out death. Yeah, you can only come up with death. And for number five, uh, and then I'm moving on. Learn number six, right? Yes. Learn to stand alone even in the church. And there you go. Learn to stand alone even in the church. What a saying to say here. The church that is the oil and wine church of the Lord, celebrated by Jehovah to the extent that he tells the writer of the black horse, please when you find her, preserve her for me. Say, God, don't touch her, but protect her. That church has learned to stand alone even in the church. <laughs> What is saying to say? Hmm? Why? Because many times today in the church today you find people are in groups. They operate in groups as though they will stand before the Lord as a group. Did you hear the truth now? Hmm. The truth is that each person, even your pastor, will stand before the Lord alone. Uh, oh, you don't know. You rather take care of you. You cannot say, I will stand there with my pastor, he will talk for me. No. Every person will stand before the Lord alone and make an account of his life. So I'm only preparing you for the kingdom of God. I am saying, learn to stand alone even in the church. <coughs> Excuse me. Why? You might join a church, go to the worship team, find sexual sin going on in the worship. They are sleeping with each other left and right. Does that mean that you should also fall? The answer is no. So learn to stand alone even in the church. I thought it was important to focus on this oil and wine a little bit. So we can underscore the third seal. The significance of the third seal. Because the third seal is the seal that now defines the bride of Christ. After it's broken, now we hear the Lord defining the bride by his own voice. And if you see Jesus talking in Matthew 25 about the oil, the, 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 the virgin with oil, and you hear the Father talk about preserving the church that's oil and wine, then you see it tallies, then you understand. The Father protects, talks very well about her, Jesus talks very well about her. That's the church you want to be. You want to know what are the characteristics of that church that I may ask the Holy Spirit to build me, to build me into that church. 
That's why I said, if I have spoken this sin, I could as well leave town. I could as well go. Because I will not stand here and tell you it is going to be on such a date, the year 2013 or 2012, November what? I will not. Once I have spoken this, the rest is in your hand. You can choose and prepare or choose not to prepare. It's also okay. I still have my reward with the Father. You see that now. Learn to stand alone even in the church. Pastors. Many times pastors say, oh, we are together in this town. We need to be in the pastor's fellowship. Check it out. If you find that those people are not interested in righteousness, they are not burdened with revival, with holiness. They have another agenda. They are talking about green cards, what, what, I want to acquire this, this. And say, but how about reviving people? And they are not interested. Learn to step out and stand alone. Did you hear? By the way, you don't have to be popular. No, by the way, you have to be unpopular. Like me, I accepted it. Before the Lord sent me, he said, the people I sent you will fight you. The people I sent you to will fight you. So I, I knew there is not going to be popular. Anyhow, there is no way the devil can like somebody coming to rebuke the evil he has brought. The devil will always try to fight that person. And by the way, at first it was painful. But later I learned that the more the devil was angry, the more the, the, the pastor and the bishop were angry. Yeah? Sometimes, I remember the first group, they were a group of... Let, can I say? Allow me say these things, please. I remember I entered every country I got trained, I tried to get a group and tell them and said, now continue this message and move on. And I remember in Kenya they, were, they came now. They said, oh now the doctors, the lawyers, the dentists, the what, the big names came and sat in front. They said, we want to be the leadership of this ministry. I said, you want? Okay, take it. Oh yes, because you said it's there, I said the one. But when I began to rebuke sin, to disciple them, and in the process rebuke sin, oh, it, it was bad. It was bad. No, it was very bad. Because they sat with meaningless cards in front here. So you can imagine I had to rebuke sin. And when I showed dresses, showed dresses in front here, and, and then some of them were saying, you know, for me, I have a gift. I am supposed to be a prophetess. <laughs> Which God? Are you seeing the confusion in the church? I say, okay, if you want to, okay, let's say now you become a prophet of God. Is that the way to dress? Where is the honor unto the Lord? Where is the wisdom unto the Lord? Where is the fear unto the Lord? Where is the glory unto the Lord? So when I rebuked sin, I saw a dream at night. They were, I saw in the morning, in the dream, they were giving me white envelopes like this. And the Lord said, letters of resignation. They resigned left and right. It was a sad time in my life. I said I thought I would gather a few and give them the list to take it to the nation. After they went, then I realized that it was good they went because I helped them. They finally came back some of them. They met me in the streets and said, you know what? I repent because you gave us the truth. So I help them. Learn to stay alone even if the church leadership resides. Don't change the message. Don't change it. 
The devil will put pressure. The church leadership, they will begin to resign, resign. The person that used to give the most in the church will step out, used to give. But please don't change the message. You are not working for money. This calling, if there's any pastor who is working for money, please step aside. Amen. Yeah, you have not been called. I, I can say, has the Lord spoken to me? Yes, he has. Yes. If you're working for money, that's, and don't even say you need money to run ministry. Because sometimes they send a delegation to me of bishops. They say, we know that you are an educated person and you have understanding. So you know that we need money to do ministry. Why are you rebuking money in the church? Then I told them, no, you are wrong. You don't need money to do ministry. But you need the anointing of the Holy Spirit to do ministry. Because the anointing of the Holy Spirit is favor. The favor of the Lord. So once you have that, all those are open. Then now you can do ministry. I'm talking about the ministry of the Lord. If it's your ministry, that's something else. That I don't know. He didn't teach me that. One. But I am talking about the ministry of the Lord preparing the church for the Messiah. If you are called to do the ministry of the Lord, let the Lord build the church. Amen. Allow him, please. Please, his hand. Allow him to build the church. And stop this thing that you watch in Christian television where they say, 20 minutes, okay, 5 minutes worship here, and then the word is 7.5 minutes, the other 7.5 we have to market our product. Forget about that. That is something else. That is taking God and putting the Lord in human, feeding him into human program. That's why in Kenya, the first thing that will strike you, and I invite all of you to Kenya, the first thing that will strike you, and when you come to Kenya, your accommodation is taking care of the transport. You only need to arrive and food and everything. But listen to this. Um, when, when the first thing that will strike you is that people can literally stand and worship the Lord for three days plus. Mm. Not stop. Three days plus. There were people from Australia recently also there and they were also stunned. Worshipping the Lord. So when revival comes, people, and in fact, the last day we have to tell them, it's over now, it's over now. It's over now, get to your vehicles and go. Revival is very powerful, the final day. That was number what? Six. The other one, fellowship with people going in the same direction. Fellowship with people going in the same direction. Precious people. The oil and wine church of the Lord. The reason Jesus talks about five virgins. Five, not one. Five wise virgin, virgins. They have a communion of fellowship. And all of them have the unity of faith. They believe in the same faith. They believe that the Messiah is coming. They believe that when he comes, he is glorious. He is holy. And the bride must be holy. We must be ready. We must be prepared. That is the unity of faith. Unity of faith does not mean to combine different denominations. Not at all. A Muslim can walk in here, receive Christ, and get to know that Christ is coming. He said, I want to get ready. He will be in unity of faith with us. Fellowship with people going in the same direction. The problem in Australia is that the church has mixed up, mixed herself up, even with people going in the opposite direction. And in fact, they have pulled her back. I am just talking about the oil and wine church that you may now develop a spiritual inventory for yourself. A spiritual barometer to test yourself. 
Test your church as a pastor. Test yourself as a member of the church. As a bride of Christ. Ask yourself, am I really going to make it? That, that's a very important person. If there is a person who can ask that, am I really going to make it? That's a very important person. Because that means you are concerned. You are worried about it. You want to do something about it. Fellowship with people going in the same direction. But it does not stop you from evangelizing to people going in the opposite direction. So which means you evangelize and disengage. If they come, well and good. The last point is this one. Always, that's number one. Always maintain an eternal perspective. In whatever you do, whether you're going to university to study at university, ask yourself, how does this program help my eternal perspective? Help to bear me, to give me the bearing of eternity. You are blessed people. You, you are blessed people. You can literally go to university and choose. You can say, I want to choose to study this. I want to choose to study that. Some of us, by the time we were studying, you were allocated a program to go study. You didn't have a choice. But today you can even choose based on your eternity. And say, I want to study this program because in here I will not lie. I will make sure I don't lie. Always ask yourself, whatever I am doing today, whatever I am saying on this phone, how does this help my eternity? The church that is the oil and wine church has already developed an eternal bearing towards God. She always maintains an eternal perspective. You will see somebody even walk out of the worship. Step out. Step out of the worship. Step out. You say, why have you stepped out? Sir? I think staying in the worship was not helping my eternity. You see that? She says, why? There was a young man there last year at me. I cannot stand it. I had to step out because I want to make sure I enter eternity. So I do not want to deal with it. People will even move from one ministry or the other to the other inside the church. From the worship ministry or from the ushering ministry. So there's a man who lands at me at the door. I don't want to be an usher anymore. I want just to sit down and worship the Lord. Yes. At the gate. At the door. They come. They last at you. They watch. You know, they flash at you. Always maintain an eternal perspective. Because the oil and wine that the Lord releases at this hour causes the church to maintain an eternal perspective. Sustain an eternal perspective. Sustain is the word. I say today I'm just summarizing what has happened here over the days. Once I've handled this oil and wine, I will have managed it to the Lord. Which number? Number eight, nine? Nine. 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 nine, nine, right? He says, Be an example others can follow. <laughs> Where? Be an example others can follow. So if you are a pastor in this city, let it be known, even by government, if they say, We need to do a project. We need to work with the church. We church can we? There is all. There is only one pastor. There is only one pastor we know. He is honest. He is always faithful. He has stood with the Lord. He is righteous. Be an example others can follow. And you know, once you are even the youth, the youth, once you have been elevated by the Lord into an example others can follow, it bestows responsibility in your life. Now you fear to error. Because you know they are watching. They are following. 
you are not a common raia in Swahili. You are not a common raia anymore. You are now elevated and people are following you. Your actions are being monitored. If you are a church, and, and let me tell you, all of these things I'm saying, they appertain to this church. For your own information. Because I have spoken here. Everything the Lord has released here. So I am expecting that this church will be an example that others can follow in Canberra and in Australia. Amen. If you are not ready for it, that's also okay by me. You know, for me, my work is simple. To come and announce and go to the next country before the hour strikes. Be an example that others can follow. You see, you, the, the, the last one, right? Number 10. ten. He says, let Jesus be the perfect example of your singular focus unto the Lord. Let me explain that. Let Jesus be your perfect example of singular, single, singular focus unto the Lord. Let me explain that. When the Lord Jesus came, what did the Lord teach us? He taught us in the way he did his ministry. He said, let me do the work of he who sent me. All the time he was focused on the Father's work. The Father's work. The Father's work. The fa he was singularly focused on the Father like this. And let Jesus be that perfect example to you on how to focus on the Father eternally. Singular focus. That is tricky. That means in the process you may have to shed off some unnecessary engagements. Amen. And just focus on the Lord at this hour. Yes, if there is an hour that deserves it, it is this hour. Hallelujah. Amen. Precious people, I want to summarize this here. I have given everything here, everything you need to enter. I have announced to you that the Messiah is coming. Prepare the way for the coming of the Lord. And I was announced here that time is over. The Lord has indeed helped me here since I came to describe to you how to prepare, to literally teach. The Holy Spirit has hence discipled you on how to prepare. You now have the truth and the confusion that has been reigning in the church is supposed to be something of the past now. If you had a little confusion, wondering how to dress in church, now it is clear. A little confusion, wondering how to serve the Lord, now it's clear. And I want to thank the pastors who have invited me here. Fred, check the Bible. Thank you very much for inviting me here. I am hoping that one day we can come and have a healing service done in your country. Amen. Then we'll send the team in advance to work with you, worship, and also to glorify the Lord. But in this place, I have spoken with you about the timeline of the Lord. The time is over and we need to prepare and now. There is no better thing to say than this now. That we need to prepare now for the coming of the Messiah. And prepare in righteousness, holiness. 
you have the scriptures in your hands. You can always fall back to them and read them. The pastors are here. They have received this message. And they will follow through by beginning to prepare the church for the coming of the king period. And the Lord has said, let this be the example that other churches can follow. I want to see more Australians enter here of all types, all classes also. Let it be known that the truth is being, because the Holy Spirit will normally enlighten the city. He will allow them that the truth, I am releasing the truth from the other side. And they will always come. Uphold <coughs> what you have received in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. That you may not lose it. We are living in perilous days. Days of darkness and evil and wickedness. So there is a great danger of plunder. Plundering what you have received. But hold steadfast to what you have received and maintain an eternal perspective. There are so many other conversations I would have wanted to share, but I will stop here for Australia. Because I know that you have everything you need to know the timing, the sensitivity of the timing, and to prepare. May the Lord bless you. Can you stand up if you want to receive the Lord? Come. If not, it's all right, I'll go. Can you play a tune there? Run, 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 and do that tune. You should be sitting there always. <laughs> if there's anybody that wants to receive the Lord, you can come. And if it's all right, I will walk out in the next one and a half minutes. And then I will leave the land. But tonight I'll wash my hands before the Lord. And I'll tell the Lord, Lord, I have delivered to them the message. Faithfully, I did not change it. As you gave it to me, so I gave it to them. And told them that you are coming. If there's anybody that wants to come and receive the Lord, you were not here yesterday when people received the Lord, please run here because in one minute I will walk away. Thank you, my son. Thank you so much. The Lord bless you. Let us clap to the Lord as well. Thank you so much, my son. Thank you. Okay, nobody be left out. I see people are coming. Then come. Just come, precious people, so that I may finish this right. Thank you so much. Come to the Lord. Because what I have spoken here is about the coming of the Messiah. That is the reason you were born. The reason. Jesus went to the cross. That when he comes back, you be found ready. If not, I'll pray for this. But if you're there, run. Don't even walk. <laughs> There's really no time.
that person left somewhere. The Lord suffered on the cross. I saw and the Lord showed me how Jesus was crucified. It broke my heart. I wept for three months and I kept collapsing. I was fainting and passing out as I wept. He paid a horrific price, horrendous price. I trembled when I saw how the Lord was crucified. He suffered, and the Bible says that he has now become the man of sorrows who is familiar with suffering. What a horrible name to have. That the darling of heaven may now become the man of sorrows and familiar with suffering, familiar with rejection. He was rejected. They spat on his face. I trembled. They spat on the face of the Lord that you may come and enter. The Lord, he went very bitterly, but nobody saved him. Even God the Father in heaven, the Father that had promised never to abandon him, finally abandoned him and closed heaven over him. And he went to the Father. And he says, Father, my Father, why have you abandoned me today? He remained lonely and poor and alone. And darkness covered the earth and lightning struck. The Lord suffered so much that you may come. Thank you, my daughter, for coming. He suffered horrific pain, unbearable pain. There is no human being until today who has suffered that amount of suffering and pain. When the Lord looks at his scars, thank you my daughter for coming. When the Lord looks at the scars he incurred, the scars, the horrific scars, horrific scars all over his body. Thank you my son for coming. Scars all over his body. The entire body is covered with scars. He looks at the scars and he says to himself, surely these people must have hated me so much. When the Lord looks at the scars, he says, the scars I see I have. They are right here. I see the scars. The price. The price I paid I can see. But where is the church? For which I paid such a price. And then his tears drop. And he cries to the Father. Father, don't put me to shame. Don't allow it. Thank you, my daughter, for coming. He paid that price that you may walk forward here and come. That you may never go back the same that your life may experience an eternal transformation. Thank you, my daughter, for coming. This is the hour to come. If we don't come now, who will come to him? He depends on you to come. That the rejection, a man of sorrows, familiar with rejection, familiar with suffering, that you may remove the shame of rejection from him. Thank you, my precious daughter, for coming. Just come to him, people. Come to the Lord. It does not matter anymore where you have been, what you have done, when I saw the suffering of the Messiah, I wept for three months non-stop and I became 
dysfunctional. Thank you, my daughter, for coming. I could not talk. I could not speak. I fell down. Any moment I stood up, I collapsed. He paid a price. The scars, thank you, my son, for coming. The scars he can see. But he asks, but where is the church for which I paid such a horrific price? They abuse me. I see the signs of abuse on my body. But where is the church? I want to see the church for which I was abused. He longs to see you come. When you come, then it essentially wipes away the tears on his face. Because then he knows that there is a change of heart. And that now you have come to him. Come to him. Come and take him. Thank you, my daughter, for coming. Come to the Lord. to pray now. And those who have come, everybody in the, in the house can repeat with them. Say, Mighty Father, Mighty Father, the God of our Lord Jesus, the God of our Lord Jesus, Lord, today I have come before you, Lord, today I have come before you, seeking for help, seeking for help, that you may help me, that you may help and transform me. And transform me. And renew my salvation. And renew my salvation. That I may be righteous. That I may be righteous. Before you. Before you. And holy. And holy. Unto the Lord. Unto the Lord. Precious Father. Precious Father. Thank you for the blood and the cross. Thank you for the blood and the cross. That has redeemed me. That's redeemed. And today, and today, I plead with you, I plead with you to establish your word in my life. To establish your word in my life. That I may be sealed. That I may be sealed of the Holy Spirit. Of the Holy Spirit. And be ready, and be ready for the coming of the Messiah. For the coming. Of Command my steps. Command my steps. And give me no choice. And give me no choice. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Today. Today. I am born again. I am born again. Let me pray right now. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Our heavenly Father. Lord, you can see the hunger of your people in this land. The power of the hunger that is in their lives. Lord, fill their hearts today with the Holy Spirit. That these people here assembled before you, no matter their condition, no matter what the doctors have decreed against their names, no matter what the husbands have said, no matter what the wives have said, no matter what the banks have decreed, employers have said, immigration have said, Father, you still remain Jehovah, the God of their lives. And I ask you, Jehovah, to now meet them at their place of need. They need salvation and redemption. 
please save and redeem their souls eternally and provide for them Jehovah establish the name of Jesus in their lives that when they walk in this nation the banner of the Lord may tower high from their lives high in their lives high through their lives that many others may find salvation Father, help these people who have come to enter the kingdom of God. Lord, I plead with you with my prophetic tongue today that for the ones that have come here today in this house, please help them to enter into the marriage supper of the Lamb. Eternal peace, eternal fellowship, eternal joy. In the mighty name of Jesus, I have blessed you all, including your families, your work, your health, protection, safety, marriages. I have indeed blessed you with my prophetic tongue today before the mighty counsel of the Lord and in the mighty name of Jesus. So let the Holy Spirit be my witness today. Amen.